A rod of length L located along the x-axis has a total charge Q and a uniform linear charge density lambda. Find the electric potential at a point P located on the y-axis, a distance A from the origin. Let's begin by sketching this scenario. We have a line of charge of a finite length that's positioned on the x-axis. This charge has a length L. So I position the left end of the charge at the origin, and the right end of the charge will be at the position x equals L. Now there's a point on the y-axis that we will say this is the point y equals a on the y-axis. This line of charge has a uniform charge density of lambda. Now don't forget that lambda is linear charge density and that's defined as the charge per unit length. Since it's uniform, the charge per unit length will be equal to the total charge divided by the length of that charge. Our goal is to find the electric potential at point A due to this line of charge. Now, this line of charge is not a point charge. We know what the electric potential is due to a point charge. Due to a point charge Q, the electric potential is KQ over R, where R is the distance from the point charge to the point at which we're evaluating. However, this isn't a point charge. This is a line of charge, charge that has a length. So how do we do that? How do we calculate the electric potential due to this line of charge? Well, let's not do the whole thing at once. Let's break up this line of charge into very tiny pieces. And let's look at one of those pieces, a representative piece. I'll just arbitrarily place it right here. This representative piece of charge has an amount of charge equal to dq, a tiny bit of charge. Now this tiny bit of charge is located at a distance of x from the origin. And this tiny bit of charge has a length, a tiny bit of length, given by dL, which is just equal to dx because we are along the x-axis. Well, if we take that tiny bit of charge, in fact, this tiny bit of charge is so small, it is infinitesimally small. That means that this infinitesimally small amount of charge can be modeled as a point charge. And we already know the electric potential due to a point charge. It's KQ over R. And since this amount of charge is a charge of DQ, we could say the electric potential due to this tiny, tiny amount of charge is a tiny amount of electric potential. And this tiny amount of electric potential is equal to K times the tiny amount of charge divided by the distance between that charge element and to the point we're evaluating. So that distance is represented in this diagram with this dotted line to help me. This is the distance r. 
So let's see if we could come up with an expression for this electric potential. Our goal is to express the charge dq in terms of the geometry of the problem. In other words, in terms of the spatial coordinates. Since the charge only lies along the x-axis, let's express the dq in terms of x. Now from up here, we have just the thing. From up here, we could say that dq is equal to lambda dl. And since we are expressing dl in terms of dx, we could say dq is equal to lambda dx. So great, that's step one. We now have our representative charge element in terms of a spatial coordinate. Now let's express R in terms of that same spatial coordinate. Well, if we look at R in the picture, we no notice we have a right triangle where the vertical leg is the distance that the point A is above the origin. The horizontal leg is the distance x that our representative charge element is from the origin. And the diagonal is r. So using Pythagorean's theorem, we would have r, the hypotenuse, is equal to the sum of the squares of the legs of this triangle, which is the horizontal leg x squared plus the vertical leg a squared. Putting these pieces together gives us a tiny bit of electric potential is equal to k lambda dx over the square root of x squared plus a squared. So now we know what the electric potential is due to that tiny charge element dq at the point y equals a on the y-axis. All we have to do now is sum up over the infinite number of these infinitesimally small point charges. How we do that is by integrating. So we will integrate both sides of this. Now in integrating, we have to decide on the limits of integration. We want to find the electric potential at point P. The integration involves a definite integral. So the definite integral we're going to do is we're going to take a point that's infinitely far away and say that that is our starting point, the beginning of our integration interval. And then we're going to take that point very far away as our reference. And remember, the electric potential at a point infinitely far away is going to be equal to zero since we define potential energy, or we're using the convention that the potential energy is defined to be equal to zero for two charges separated in, by an infinite distance. Since electric potential depends on electric potential energy, that means electric potential at a point infinitely far away from our source charge is equal to zero. So Choosing the lower limit of integration to be infinity is going to mean that that term, when we evaluate the potential at that point, will be zero. Now the upper limit of integration is just the, the value v at the point p in which we're integrating. So I'll put a subscript a because this is corresponding to the value of the potential at y equals a on the x-axis. Now, for the limits of integration on the integral on the right, we're actually integrating over the length of the charge. 
the charge is left end is at the origin, so that is at x equals 0, and the charge is right end is at x equals L. Well, the next line means we have the potential from infinity down to the point VA is equal to k lambda times the integral from 0 to L of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx. Now, I'm going to look up this integral in my integration table. So the left side of this ends up being the potential evaluated at point A minus the potential evaluated at infinity is equal to k lambda. And I'm going to use an integration table to help me with this one. This is the natural log of x plus the square root of a squared plus x squared evaluated from 0 to L. Well, we know the potential at infinity is 0. So we have the potential at the point A is equal to k lambda natural log of, and we're going to have a difference here. In the numerator, it is going to be L plus the square root of A squared plus L squared. And in the denominator, it is 0 plus the square root of a squared plus 0 squared. So evaluating this, the electric potential at point A is equal to k. Lambda, remember, is the total charge over L times the natural log of L plus the square root of a squared plus l squared divided by a. We have now found the potential at the point y equals a on the y-axis due to this line of charge.